Now let's learn about adding integers with different signs. This is modeling sums of integers with different signs, 1.2b. In video 1.1a, we modeled addition using counters in which positive numbers were yellow and negative numbers were red. We can use yellow and red counters to model addition of integers with different signs. So if you remember, we had a yellow counter that is a positive one. A red counter is going to represent a negative one. And we can use any two colors. We could use green and red. We could use blue and red. We could use green and blue. It doesn't matter as long as you remember which counter represents positive and which counter represents negative. When we add one positive integer and one negative integer, our result is zero. One yellow and one red counter form a zero pair and cancel each other out. One and negative one are opposites on a number line. We have a positive one and a negative one. They're each one jump from zero. They cancel each other out. When we add opposites, the sum is zero. We create a zero pair. When we add a positive 2 and a negative 2, it's going to equal 0. We have two yellow counters that represent the positive 2. We can make 0 pairs by circling these, one positive and one negative, and these, one positive and one negative, and they cancel each other out, and it is equal to 0. We made 0 pairs by grouping one yellow to one red. We make as many zero pairs as possible, then we count the remaining counters. Here, there were none remaining outside of the pairs, so our sum is zero. Here, we have two positive and three negative. We make zero pairs. We make one zero pair, two zero pairs, and we have this negative one left over. We have one negative counter left over, so the sum is negative one. Here we have negative 5 plus 3. We start with 5 red counters for negative 5, then line up 3 yellow counters for positive 3 under each red counter. We circle 0 pairs. We can make 1, 2, 3, and count the remaining counters. There's 2 negative counters left over. There are two red counters left, so the sum is negative 2. When we model with more positive counters than negative counters, our sum will be positive. We have a positive 4, so there's four yellow counters. We're adding a negative 3, so we have three red counters. We have one positive counter left over. Our sum is positive there's more positive counters. When we model with more negative counters than positive counters, our sum will be negative. We have a positive 2 plus a negative 3. The sum is negative 1. So for those of you who need a little review, absolute value is the distance from 0 on a number line. This is a bar, and here is a bar. We have one on the left and the right with the negative 3 inside. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. It is 3 jumps from 0. Negative 3 is 3 jumps from 0, so its absolute value is just 3. Here we're adding a positive 4 to a negative 3. We have four yellow counters representing this positive 4. We have three red counters representing this negative 3. 4 has a greater absolute value than negative 3. 4 is farther away from 0 than negative 3. And 4 is positive, so our sum is positive. There are more yellow counters. There are more positive counters. Our sum is positive. Here we're adding 2 plus negative 4, so we have two yellow counters for the positive 2 and four red counters for the negative 4. 
negative 4 has a greater absolute value than 2, it's farther away from 0 than 2 is, and negative 4 is negative, so our sum is negative. Negative 4 is negative, so our sum is negative, because there's more negative counters. So notice the sum has the same sign as the add-in with the greater absolute value. This had a greater absolute value, so the sum was also positive. This negative 4 had a greater absolute value, and it's negative, so our sum was negative. And we'll discuss this more in the next video lesson. If we don't have yellow and red counters, we can make some plus and minus counters. If we have a positive 2, we can make two plus signs for the positive 2. We're adding it to a negative 3, so we make three minus counters. We can see, after making our zero pairs, that we have one negative counter left over. So our sum is negative 1. We can even draw counters. We can use two plus signs for the positive 2 and three minus signs for the negative 3. We can just write them on a piece of paper and circle our zero pairs and see that there's one negative left over. Or we can use colored pencils or crayons and make two green ones for two positives and just draw two dots and draw three red ones for the negative three, make our zero pairs, and see we have one negative left over. So we can add integers with different signs without counters by finding the difference between the numbers without their signs and using the sign of the add-in with the greatest absolute value. If we're adding negative 7 plus 4, we think, well, the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. It's 7 jumps away from 0, and the absolute value of 4 is 4. It's 4 jumps away from 0. The difference between 7 and 4 is 3. Negative 7 plus 4 is equal to negative 3. Negative 7 has the greater absolute value than 4, so our sum will have the same sign as negative 7. It will have a negative. We figured out the difference was 3. Negative 7 has the greater absolute value, so our sum is going to have the same sign as the add-in with the greater absolute value. We finished this part of the lesson. We're going to move on to 1.2c, which is adding integers, inverse property of addition, and additive inverse. So now you can try using counters or making your own or drawing counters to add integers with different signs. Have a great day, and please join me next time. Bye.